1995, in December 1995, American Airlines Flight 965 departed from Miami on a regularly scheduled trip to Cali, Colombia. On the landing approach, the pilot needed to select the next radio navigation fix, named Rozo. He entered an R into his navigation computer, and the computer returned a list of nearby fixes starting with R. <coughs> the pilot choose, picked the select, selected the first of these whose latitude and longitude appeared to be correct. Unfortunately, instead of Rozo, the pilot selected Romeo. 132 miles to the northeast, the jet was southbound, descending into a valley that runs north to south, and any lateral, lateral deviation was dangerous. Following the directions on the flight computer, the pilot began an easterly turn, and the plane slammed, and the plane slammed into a granite peak at 10,000 feet. 152 passengers and all eight crew members died. Four passengers survived with serious injuries. This is a story that illustrates how easy it is to wander off the right path. Now let's read a psalm that tells us how God's love brings us back to the right path. Psalm 107, 1 through 9. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached the city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man, for he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Now I need to give you guys a little bit of a background. This psalm follows two psalms which both testify to God's faithfulness in delivering Israel in a particular time of trouble. Psalm 105 is a song of praise to God for his deliverance from the children of Israel from their bondage in Egypt. But Psalm 106 tells the sad story of how these same people repeatedly disobeyed God. It tells a long story of how the people rebel against God while at the banks of the Red Sea, of how they complained against God in the wilderness, and of how they rebel against Moses with authority and bowed down to the golden calf of how they despised the promised land, and of how they adopted the evil ways of the nations around them, and much more. We read that God grew angry with them, and many times allowed them to be delivered to their enemies. But we also read that when his people cried, Save me, save us, O Lord our God, he had mercy on them. In Psalm 107, Psalm 107 then follows after these accounts of God's deliverance of his people and builds on a record of God's faithfulness to respond to his people people whenever they call out to him for rescue. And from Psalm 107, 1 through 9, which I read, I believe we learned these seven things that are true about God that can help us stay on the right path. Verse 1 begins with, Oh, thank the Lord, for he is good. This means he is full of generosity towards us, just as he was toward the Israelites. Another place we hear of God's goodness is in Psalm 105. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, his faithfulness toward all generations. Can you think of ways that God has been good or faithful toward you? Let me tell you a story of a toddler who was working under plumbing under his house with his dad. When his dad turned around to repair a pipe, the toddler saw something that looked very tempting. He pulled a plumbing cement applicator, which looked a lot like a lollipop, out of the bottle and stuck it into his mouth to suck on. As you might imagine, when his dad turned around and saw him, he panicked. But to cut the chase, the little boy was fine, and there were no ill effects. The little boy was me, and <laughs> although some people may say there are ill effects, <laughs> I think I'm okay, and I know God has been good and faithful towards me and my family that day. And I'm sure all of you could tell similar stories of God's goodness and faithfulness towards you. Also, 
God demonstrated his steadfast love to me that day, and that brings me to point number two. Verse one continues with, for his steadfast love endures forever. From this verse, we find another attribute that is true of God. God loves us steadfastly. Let me define steadfast for you. It means firm or unfaltering. God still loves us even though we are not steadfast and wander from him a lot. Let's talk for a moment about God's steadfast love towards the Israelites when he delivered them from slavery in Egypt. He sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt, even parting the Red Sea to help them escape. But yet they turned on God later in the story, grumbling and complaining. They even asked to go back to Egypt. But through all of his, this, his love, God loved them steadfastly, provi providing for them throughout their time in the desert, and finally delivering them to the promised land. Aren't we a lot like the Israelites? And yet God still loves us steadfastly. In Psalm 36, we read of God's steadfast love in several places. In verse 5 it says, Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. In verse 7 we read, How precious is your steadfast love, O God. And finally, in verse 10 it says, O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright of heart. So as you can see, God's steadfast love is abounding. It is unending. It is, as I said earlier, firm or unfaltering. The third item we find to be true of God is that God redeems the redeemed from their trouble. Which we see in verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble. There are four questions within the small verse that we need to address. The first is, who are the redeemed? In this passage, the redeemed are the Israelites, but this is also an analogy for those who believe in and belong to Jesus Christ. The second question is, what does it mean to be redeemed? To be redeemed, to be redeemed means to be ransomed, delivered from bondage, distress, penalty, liability, or from the possession of another by payment. The third question is, who is the redeemer? Well, the redeemer is the one who redeems or ransoms, or maybe I can simply say pays the price. The last question you might ask is, what is the trouble he is redeeming them from? To put it plainly, it is our sin. God redeems us from our sin. Sin made slaves of man. At the cross, Jesus paid the price with his blood to free man from the, from the yoke of slavery. Jesus is our redeemer. In Job 19.25, it says, I know that my redeemer lives. Do you know that your redeemer lives? Do you, do you live your life in such a way that others know that this is true? The fourth truth that we find about God is that he gathers the redeemed people from their wandering. This is found in verse 3 through 6, where it tells us that the redeemed are gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. <coughs> Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. God collected the Jews out of captivity and brought them back out of Babylon. He also gathers his people today. We read in Isaiah 56, verse 8, The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Whenever God's people may be, wherever God's people may be scattered, he will bring them home. This is seen again in Isaiah 43, 5-6. Fear not, I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. The fifth idea that we see is true about God from this passage is that God led them by a straight way. Verse 7 tells us, He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. God will take you down a straight path, and when you wander, he will bring you back. John Bunyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress, told his testimony that as a young man he wandered off the path leading to Christ and was very ungodly, and that he rejected God. He said he did not desire to know God's knowledge or his truths. But after rejecting God, he felt no peace in his life and felt greatly troubled by thoughts of the future. He thought he'd sin beyond any possible redemption. But after reading John, Verse six, chapter 6, verse 37. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. 
Bunyan was brought back to the straight path. We too must take care not to get sidetracked from the straight and narrow path. A more modern story is of pro surfer Matt Beckham. Matt grew up in a Christian household, but when he got involved in professional surfing, he strayed off God's path. After two crazy car accidents and what he thought were near-death accidents surfing, he thought God was trying to talk to him. Eventually, Matt thought about how dumb it was to leave God. 